Welcome to the channel. I am your friendly neighborhood hillbilly, the King Koopa, and thank you for stopping by. So I got a good little video for you today. We're going to be finally disassembling the little 4.8 that came out of our work truck. We're going to be swapping over to a 6.0 and LQ9, but we're going to be using some of these performance parts. So today, I finally decided to pull the trigger. I am going to go with some Frankenstein Stage 2 porting services. So we're going to take these 243 Cathedral port heads off. We're going to box them up ship them all the way out to Texas and uh, they're going to pour them, do their thing, get them all cleaned up. They're going to put larger valves in them and a whole bunch of stuff. They're going to even be able to laser edge Franken down the side, which is pretty sweet. And that is going to cost a big chunk of change, which I will break it down for you in a little bit. But Frankenstein did say it's supposed to gain about 50 to 55 horsepower to the wheels on a naturally aspirated 6.0. <sighs> okay, so that's the main reason for doing it. So this truck really wasn't supposed to be an all-out build. It does have a stock bottom end, so the crank, connecting rods, and pistons. I probably should have went with aftermarket connecting rods and pistons. <sighs> I don't know why I didn't. Trying to save money, I guess. But uh, next build, anyways. We're talking with Cam Motion to find the biggest camshaft we can fit in there, like a 234 by 240-ish, something like that. So. I was going to do all this, put it all back together, put it in the truck, and then I knew I was going to be, not regretting it, but like itching in the back of my mind, like, man, I should have just got the heads done, got that extra 50 horsepower, put me up just a little bit higher, because we are going to be running uh, like 150 shot of nitrous on the 6.0. It's gapped for a 200 shot, um, but I don't know if I want to push those stock pistons that far. So I had this debate for a while. I could just throw all this on the 6.0, drop her back in the truck, and uh, get her tuned and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I have it all disassembled. Might as well do it. And if you're watching this because you're interested in motor work or doing Frankenstein heads or stuff like that, make sure you get this how-to guide for uh, GM LS series engines. I think I've put this in like every single one of my videos that required engine stuff in it. This book seriously helps you out. It tells you everything you need to know, specs, tolerances, everything. And uh, I'll put a link for that in the description below. So the cost evaluation breakdown of the Frankenstein heads. So just the porting service on each head is $509 and there's two heads. So that's 1018 bucks. And then we're also going with the Stage 2 kit, which goes with larger exhaust and intake valves. That's going to help for more airflow, for more power, more fuel, more power, baby! <laughs> so those are stainless steel intake valves. So those are 38 bucks each, and there's like... Sixteen of those. I can't do math. I was a Marine, okay? I ate crayons. <laughs> Anyways, 38 bucks, there's 16 of those. Those are 304 for each side. So 608 bucks just for the valves. Ouch. Anyways, comes out to a $1,600, $1,626 plus $70 for shipping, which puts it almost at $1,700. I do have a 10% off coupon, which they were handing these out at the PRI event. I got these. Um, from one of my motor buddies, so big thank you to him. Saved me 162 bucks for this little piece of cardboard right here. So that brought my final total down to $1,534.79 out the door. That is before my cost to ship it to them, which I assume is probably going to be another 70 bucks through like UPS. So some people might say that's cheap. Some people might say that is expensive. You got to do that cost to horsepower evaluation breakdown yourself. 1500 bucks or roughly 1600 bucks for 50 to 55 horsepower you know some people might say you know just buy the 3400 dollars like here on speed turbo kit or something like that slap it on there and run like eight pounds of boost and make like 500 horsepower yes you could do that this truck i'm trying to stay naturally aspirated and i'm actually trying to wrap all this up finish up and move on to a new project and speaking of spending money i also bought an ati super dampener this is a 10 percent underdrive pulley it's also uh, SFI approved. It's pretty lightweight. You have your main drive and you also have the AC compressor drive. You don't have to get that if you don't want to run AC, but I like to be comfortable. It's a street truck. So this was like 400 and some change. This being a 10% underdrive pulley is going to allow the engine to spin up into the high RPMs faster since it has less uh, drag, or I guess it's spinning all the accessories a little bit less so it's easier for the motor less work for the motor. Some people say it adds like 5 or 10 horsepower supposedly, but it is a little bit lighter than the standard truck pulley. So we're going to be putting that bad boy on there too, but not this video. We are about to start disassembling one side, but first thing you want to do is make sure you have a nice clean surface and storage area for your parts. 
I got uh, this new toolbox, stainless steel top, pretty nice. Um, all those tools are going to be tools. All those parts are going to be sitting there for probably eight weeks. That's what Frankenstein said it's going to take by the time they receive the heads for me to get them back. So, roughly two months. So I'm okay with these parts sitting here on this workbench for two months. And uh, first thing we're going to do though, I want you to go out, pick one of these bad boys up. You don't really need to get one. I think it's like 40 bucks but it's a uh, parts organizer for the head. You can put the rockers in there, you can put your push rods in here, and you can stick both valves in there. And it's organized front, back, you know, driver's side, passenger side. Some people says that it matters. The way it comes out is the way it's supposed to go back in. Some people just pull all that out, throw it in the box, and just reassemble it later. I don't know, I'm just gonna keep them organized. I'm no specialist. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is remove the coil packs. Those are 10 millimeter bolts holding those on. Be careful removing this filler neck. It's plastic and does break easily, but we got five bolts holding on the coil packs. This one holding the heater hoses does have a double nut on there. And then there's a nut right off on the bottom. Boom, just like that, nice and easy. Next, we're gonna switch to an eight millimeter and take these four bolts off holding the valve covers on. Boom, and there are the goodies. Oh, my gasket. Before we move on, let's talk about some parts organization. So we use a little magnet tray to keep all the bolts and stuff to make sure they don't go down in the engine. Not a big deal right now since we're tearing it all apart. But we got a little Ziploc bag labeled coil pack hardware inside the bag. So if you Sharpie on the outside, that'll all get rubbed off. Boom, bagged and tagged. And now we can put it in our little stack of parts baggies over there so we know exactly where everything goes <clears throat> but moving right along we can junk all these gaskets we got new ones we're not going to reuse any of these so we're just going to scrap them and let's give her a quick peek nice and shiny in there this motor does have a hundred and like twenty five thousand miles on it granted we did have these heads off before and had them milled fifteen thousands we got the 660 pack springs and we did do a trunnion rebuild on these factory rockers There we go, not too bad. These are relatively newer plugs. These are the NGK TR6s. Good plugs for running cold temps. We're probably gonna get an even colder spark plug since we're running nitrous. So we're gonna save these and probably run them in like the vet or something later down the road. Our next important step is gonna be the rocker arm removal. So you could remove all these bolts all at once, leaving them in the rocker arms and then pulling them all off with this tray underneath all at once. But we do have an organizer tray, so we're going to utilize that. So we're going to be pulling them off individually. But an important note, if you do have aftermarket valve springs, removing these can cause thread damage to either the head or the bolt of the rocker arm. And what I mean by that is you want to make sure that that respective valve is closed when you're removing that rocker arm bolt. So if you have a rocker arm that's dipped down, that means the camshaft is pushing, you know, the lifter, pushing the push, push rod, pushing on the rocker so it's causing tension on the rocker arm so when you're removing that bolt it's going to strip the threads. That was a lot of words. So just make sure that the valve is closed when you're removing that bolt from that rocker arm. As we're removing these we get to one that needs to have the valves closed so we're going to be turning the crank pulley bolt with just a ratchet in a socket. That's going to be spinning the crank which spins the timing chain which spins the camshaft and that's going to change the lobes and get that valve to close. There's the first one, nice and clean threads. Now, while we are removing these, we're gonna be inspecting for damage, damage on the threads, the valve seat, or the seat where the push rod goes. If you can see real closely, I thought that was a crack. That is actually a dog hair. Oh, Nala. Nala, is that your hair? I got your hair up in my engine. <clears throat> now we can pull the push rods out, inspect those for damage. So we have our valve train up and out of the way, and now we're about to remove the passenger side cylinder head. So we're gonna break all 15 bolts loose. We 
there's five on the top that are 10 millimeter and there are five in the middle and five on the bottom that are 13 millimeter. Now the cylinder head does have coolant passageways inside it. So as soon as we started breaking the bolts loose on the cylinder head, you can see it's already starting to leak out the bottom. So we have a bunch of rags and a little catch can on the floor to catch all that fluid. Ooh. I should have got a bucket. Ah, oh, it's too late now. Mm. Not too bad. Mm. Wasting shot towels. Yep, <clears throat> she's a gusher. Now that I used 50 shot towels. <laughs> yeah, we got a nice look at the head gasket here, we have the flat top pistons with 4.8 and uh, I believe these were LS9 head gaskets that I used previously, multi-layered steel, and we are going to trash those as well in the scrap bucket. Now we have a nice view to our lifter trays, the bolt that hold them in place, and then our lifters are below those. Sweet, not too shabby. We are going to have to remove the driver's side. The only difference between this and the passenger side is that it does have the power steering bracket on the front of that that has like four bolts that mount into, I think it's three bolts that mount into the head and one into the block. So we'll have to remove that and then we can pull the bolts out that hold the driver's side head in. But some kind of bad news. So the last oil change that I did before I pulled this motor, it had 500 miles on that oil and it had some gold flakes in it. Not crazy bad, but I noticed it and I was like, oh, Man. And when we did the original cam swap, I didn't even inspect the cam bearings. It's, it's like that old saying they say, if you inspect the cam bearings, they're going to be bad. If you don't inspect them, they're going to be good. <laughs> They've been good so far. Um, but I did cut apart the oil filter with my new uh, oil filter tool, which is pretty cool. This bad boy right here from All Star Performance, you just put your oil filter right here. And then you can uh, put tension on it by turning this knob. And then you grab the handle and you can just spin it right around the oil filter. Works out pretty well. It helps if you put it in the vice. Anyways, I figured I might need that tool, um, especially doing all this performance stuff, and cut the filter apart, pulled the filter all the way out, inspected the backside, inspected the front side, and there was almost no shaving to it at all. So that is a really good sign because that means that the oil did not get sucked up through the intake tube and get distributed throughout the engine through the lifters and all that stuff. So once we do fully tear this block down, we're going to be using this block, the pistons connecting rod, you know, the stock bottom end, that's going to be going in the project vet. So we're going to have to put new cam bearings in it, we're probably going to put new crank bearings in it. And I think I'm going to do all that myself. The 6.0 I had done by a professional shop, so I know that it's good and solid. So I'll put new bearings on it, probably new piston rings, reassemble it all back together and throw some turbos on it on the project Corvette. The little 4.8, that's good. <laughs> All right, let's get these all cleaned up and boxed up, ready to be shipped. So I'm excited. <clears throat> and we are all done. This bad boy is heavy. Somebody at Frankenstein is going to be pissed when they have to open this up. <laughs> I used four rolls of masking tape in total. I bought a big bulk pack um, from Menards, so I'm not too worried about it. But um, I don't think this thing's getting wet. I don't think this thing's getting torn. I could probably throw this right now. So when I boxed this up, I had to put that coupon code from the PRI event, the 10% off inside. And then I also had to put a copy of my order inside as well so when they open this up they'll know who it belongs to and uh they can get started on it they said it's estimated eight weeks so we'll see i'm pretty excited and in the meantime i can start uh finishing up the e-fan swap and then uh i'm going to relocate the gauges for my nitrous my fuel pressure and uh my afr gauge i'm going to put that somewhere in the center console i think so that is a wrap guys i appreciate all your guys support thank you so much for watching especially if you stayed till the end so look forward in about eight weeks for a new video of the heads when they come back. I'm going to do a comparison of the exhaust ports, intake ports, see how much they have changed. Hopefully once we're done, we go with the monster camera or somewhere around like 450-ish to the wheels. So stay tuned, guys. Hope you guys are having a great day. Again, I appreciate all your guys' support. I'll catch you in the next video.